Hello and welcome back to our arcade kart racer series. In the previous episode we got our vehicle steering but now we need to make it so it's visually showing that steering working as well as the car moving forwards. So what we're going to do is add wheels onto our kart, make them turn, make them spin and ultimately just improve the handling of our vehicle. So let's get started. So last time we were here in the kart project we got our kart rolling around with some steering uh, so let's now make it so you can actually visually see the steering happening by adding some wheels to our cart and along with that the suspension that comes with them so being an arcade kart racer we're not applying movement like you would do with a physics based racer so you're not turning the wheels like you do in real life to put a dra create drag and pull for the vehicle so what we've got to do instead is we've basically got to basically fake it with the wheels um so they look like they are attached to the car and doing their thing so on the viewport we've got our scene components that we're using for our reference points for each wheel i'm going to go to the first one here i'm going to add a static mesh and i'm going to call it one wheel fl and i'm going to choose in here the cylinder shape that looks like a coin it's in the default pack that you get with the engine i like that and i'm going to leave it just like this okay i'm not going to do anything else to it it's not going to have physics on it or anything like that it's just going to be there i'm then going to duplicate that and attach that to the other side and you can reset the zero 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 mark it's important that you keep the location and rotation and scale hit at the zero zero so that when we add our transforms to it it doesn't get look weird um and if you want to adjust the position of the wheels a change where the suspension is the reference points for this is coming from Okay, and there's those wheels. Let's just rename this one. FR. Duplicate that. And reset that one. BR. And finally, BL. I'll put on the BL component. Reset that. So there's our wheels. Now, at the moment, they're just static, attached to the car, not going to do anything. One big thing you'll notice, though, when we push play, the physics kind of go to nuts. And the reason why is because the car is clipping through the wheels and causing physics reactions. We just need to tell our wheels here not to interact with the, the chassis or the body of the car. So on the box of the car, we're going to go down to its collision presets. And I'm going to tell this to ignore or overlap physics bodies okay so it won't do anything regarding uh those sort of physics bodies actually no i'll tell you what we'll do it with uh with vehicle we'll do it with vehicle so you can overlap vehicle colliders and then i'm going to go down to each of the wheels select them all at once you can do it all at once we're going to go to the collision presets customize this and then change the object type from world dynamic to vehicle. And so now the chassis will ignore the wheels. Which it should do. Ah, that's because I didn't do it to the cube as well. Got to do it with the cube. There you go. There we go. And the wheels now are attached to the vehicle. Now the wheels are static. They're not doing anything at the moment. They don't do it like move up and down or turn or anything like that. So let's get them adding onto our suspension so we've already got our suspension um function going on which takes the component and traces down to find out where the suspension should be so what we're going to do is we're going to change the position of the wheel according to the distance to the floor so we're going to take out our wheel now the way we're going to do this is using the wheel component we can get the child component of this so at the end here we're going to Right click, get wheel comp. And back bottom. And then we're going to get the child component. And I'll get the most immediate child component. So in this case, it'd be the wheel mesh. And from that, we're going to do set relative location. And the relative location of this is going to be split 
because we're only going to go up and down, so we only want the Z. And what we're going to do is, because this has been ticked on all the time, we're going to do a lerp for our Z axis here. So I'm going to do F interp 2. And the current value is going to get child component, get relative location, and split that. The target location is going to be our distance. So not from the normalized to range, but just from the distance, drag out over to here to the target. And with delta time, we do delta world seconds. And intercept speed will do no, three. So let's take a look at what happens now. Okay, not too bad. It's just they're the wrong way around. So that's because a distance value coming out is a positive value. We need it to be negative, so it goes down. So what we need to do is flip it so it goes underneath, goes down, but also we need to take into account the half height of the wheel because we measure it from the wheel's center point. So we're going to take the target value here. We're going to multiply that by negative 1. And then we're going to add onto it half height of the wheel and the half height of the wheel we can just double click on the mesh you'll see in here it's 64 by 24 by 64 so half of 64 is 32 so let's add 32 to it and bring it into the target now let's see what it looks like yeah not too bad so that's the dis suspension and if you want to be a tighter suspension, you just change the um, the delta uh, time and speed to improve that and twist that however you want. Okay, so now the suspension is working, we're going to make the wheels turn in their place as well as handle the steering turning as well. So let's go back over to our cart. And you'll find yourself in the calculate acceleration function. And that's because we're going to be using this acceleration value to determine how fast the wheel should be spinning. So the first thing we're going to do is drag out all of our wheels. So I'm going to select each one by holding down control. And I'm going to drag them all out onto the graph like that. And now I'm going to drag from just one of them. And I'm going to do add local rotation. And as the name implies, it's going to add a rotation to the asset. So I'm going to do it to each one. And then I'm going to split open the delta rotation. Now, every time you see the word delta, it just means difference. It's just going to be adding on this amount every time we call this function, which should be on every tick. And the rotation we're going to be doing in is based in one axis. To make sure you get the right one, just go to your viewport, select the wheel, and you should see which axis is the one that you'll be turning. In this case, in my one, it is the y axis. So I'm going to go back to there, and I'm going to plug in the y axis. Now, I could just plug the acceleration straight into the y-axis, but you'll probably find that this value is too high and it will go really, really fast. So I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to divide it by a smaller number. So I'm going to divide it by, let's say, a thousand for now and plug that into the y-axis. Okay, and as we test that, you can see here the wheels are turning. They're turning the wrong way, but they're turning, which is good. And they continue to turn as we move nice okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to make them turn your way by just dividing it by negative a thousand and that should fix that behavior there so let's test that out now you should see the wheels are turning the right way and the way they go Okay, so next up, we've got the steering of the front wheels. So let's go back to our cart. And in this case, I'm going to go to the event graph because I want to find the steering input that we're using on enhanced input action, IA steer. And what we're going to do in this one is we're going to turn the wheels in a different axis. So it is the front ones. And here you can see we're rotating in the Z axis like this. Now, the problem we're going to have at the moment is because we're spinning them around, this is going to get a bit 
weird and broken. So fortunately, we've already got the solution on hand, which is changing the rotation of the uh, the scene component where suspension is being calculated from. So I'm going to turn that instead. So let's go back to the event graph. Go drag out our front wheels suspensions. So FL wheel and FR wheel. And we're going to be doing, um, we'll do set relative rotation. Again, plug for those who are plugged into that. And we're going to split this open because we only want to affect the Z axis. So the Z axis here, we're going to make it smoothly lurk between where they currently are and where they're going to go next. So we're going to do from our yaw here interp2 and the current value is going to be the current rotation of our wheels so what i'm going to do is i'll take one of the wheels because they've both been rotated so i need one i'm going to drag out this one get the rotation and i want to make sure i get the relative rotation I'll split it open and the yaw going to the current now okay we then, the target is going to come from our action value. We're going to drag down and put it into our target there. Delta time, we'll use our delta world seconds. And in tap speed, we'll do, uh, let's do three. Let's get started. So now, let's take a look at that. And you can see if I move the mouse, the wheels are turning. And as we move forwards, I can turn and the wheels look like they're adjusting just fine. Excellent. Okay, that all looks pretty good. There's a couple of things I want to tweak and improve here. The first one is if when I go off this ramp, you'll notice that all momentum is lost. Yeah. And the reason why that happens is because when our cart leaves the floor, suspension is lost and therefore obviously we lose a connection to the floor. And if I go to my suspension cast, it's only accelerating the cart when we are on the floor which you know makes sense but for our little arcade racer we don't want that to be the case we want to give it momentum going forwards and give it a bit more power so on accelerate cart here i'm going to copy that and paste it down into the false branch as well so now it'll do it regardless and send it across now we will be doing something in here to diminish the acceleration so it's not as um as fast as it should be it will, it will start slowing down but for now that's all we need to write about next is if we actually go test that out in the game we can see that in action there you go we can actually make jumps now And to make things a little bit smoother still, we're going to make it so that acceleration when we push the button can only happen when we're not when we are touching the floor. So if we're in the air, this acceleration is not going to work. So we need to make a function that will check whether or not we're on the floor or not, because we're also going to use it for steering. So let's make a little function here is on ground. And for that, we're going to do a simple line trace down by channel and the start location for this will be our actors location and the end position is going to be our actor location subtract and we want to go down roughly doesn't be too exact but roughly the height of the vehicle so i'm going to do uh, about 32 because i know these wheels are 64 by 64 so let's go back to here and change the Z here for, I'm gonna round up to 35 actually, and move that back down to end here. So it is on ground, and we're going to return this return value here. And if that is true, that means we've hit the ground. If it's false, it means we're still in midair. And this is the hallmarks of a good get node, uh, so pure function. So we're gonna click on the pure function button when you select one of the purple nodes here. That means I can now go back to my event graph 
and go to our CIA Accelerate. And before we call Acceleration Input, we are going to take this actual value and do select float and bring it down to target. And the pick A is going to be that is on ground function. So if it's on ground, it'll pick the A value, which is this acceleration button. And otherwise, B, it'll pick B, which is zero when we're not in the ground. So acceleration will be diminished. And we won't gain any acceleration while we're midair. Next up is I'm going to adjust a slightly with the camera. So I'm going to go to my spring arm and we're going to change it to be enabling the camera rotation lag. This means that as the camera turns, as the character turns, sorry, the cart, the camera will be lagged behind, which gives us these nice, cool, dynamic sort of shots. And you can adjust the settings to make it more pronounced if you want as well. But if I turn the vehicle, like this, we can see the side of the car a bit more as we are moving around. So there you have it. We've got nice new controls. We've got something visually showing for our carts. It's all looking good. But what is a cart racer without a track? So in our next episode, we're going to start work on our test track that we can put together and start working on the mechanics of actually recording someone's laps in a track if you want to watch that next episode right now head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan laley we can find all my videos early from just one dollar a month a massive thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support of the channel thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time